Greetings, I'm Yvonne Stapp for Science for the Public, and I welcome you to Contemporary Science Issues and Innovations. One of the most abundant sources of renewable energy is the heat deep in the earth. This geothermal energy could provide clean heat and energy for whole cities, and in some parts of the world it does, such as Iceland. But accessing this resource can be difficult. Our guest today is Paul Waskoff, research engineer at the Plasma Science and Fusion Center at MIT. Dr. Waskoff will explain the challenges of exploiting geothermal energy and a, a mechanism called a gyrotron that might just solve the problem. Dr. Waskoff, welcome and thank you for joining us. So Dr. Waskoff, the big question is, what is this geothermal energy and uh, how accessible is it? Well, geothermal energy is mining heat below the surface of the earth. And it's accessible by drilling uh, uh, boreholes uh, below the surface. The deeper you go, the hotter uh, the heat oh. energy is. Uh, so it, it is being mined in various places where the temperature is hot near the surface in places like you mentioned, Iceland and the Geysers Valley in California, for example. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and also, they're generally uh, uh, accessible. There's also water present underground. Yeah. So you drill a well, tap into the hot water, and then use that heat energy uh, to uh, heat uh, buildings or homes or you can use it in a uh, generator to uh, uh, produce electricity. Okay, uh, I, I think I mentioned to you before we started that there was an, something going on right here in Massachusetts, in Framingham, uh -huh. Massachusetts, but it's not doing the entire city yet. But it's apparently, it's they just drilled down, tapped the heat, uh, and then they will use it for heating and cooling. I don't think it's for electricity, but I think what you no. are up to is going to be much more powerful. Uh, no, what you're... Uh, thinking about our, our shallow uh, wells, maybe 100 or 200 feet yeah, exactly. underground, and the, where the temperature is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit yes. year round, and then they use uh, electric heat pumps exactly. to uh, uh, get uh, some of that heat in the winter, and then they use the heat pump in reverse right. for cooling in the summer. Uh, that's a different that's thing. That's a different thing. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, what, what I'm working on is deep geothermal, yes. where we go to uh, real high temperatures. Okay. And our ultimate goal is to go where the temperature is 750 degrees Fahrenheit. And at that temperature, we can mine supercritical steam. Uh -huh. That's where water is heated many times above its boiling point. But under pressure, it still remains a liquid. So we pump the superheated uh, water up and then we run an electric turbine in the same way that a fossil fuel uh, burning furnace would heat water on the surface and run that electric turbine. I see. Now, so the purpose of the, the, that's a big purpose to go very yeah. deep into the yes. earth to do that. You are going to use uh, uh, a refitted, I guess, uh, uh, abandoned mines, coal mines and such, right? Uh, is that the idea uh, was that, that you were going to do? Uh, no, no. Uh, the reference to abandoned coal uh, plants is to current fossil fuel uh, burning plants on the surface that have closed down, yeah. that previously burned coal, but they've been closed down. Uh, because of uh, the greenhouse gas issue. Uh, so what uh, we're proposing is we would drill geothermal wells at that site yeah. where you have all the infrastructure of the electric transmission lines and also you have your uh, electric generator on site. But instead of burning the fossil fuel, we would mine the heat deep beneath, beneath the surface. Okay. And the, uh, the, the the mine is already very deep, the shaft, whatever, well, it's already, but you'd go further our, than that. Yeah, well, we're developing the technology to make that shaft yes. economically. Right, okay. right, I see. What is the complication of, of, of trying to go that deep to get 
that temperature? Uh, well, you have to go real deep to the temperatures we would like to uh, mine. And current mechanical drilling technology is uh, challenged by going to those depths due to high temperatures and pressures. Uh, so we're uh, proposing this new technology, which should be able to go deeper and into higher pressure regions. Uh, where we can access that high temperature heat in more places around uh, the earth than possible now. I see. I know that you did a lot of experiments on, was it on the basalt? As, as, uh, okay. uh, the getting through this rock and then you have this special device or mechanism. Could you tell us about that? Yeah. Well, uh, what we're interested in developing is called enhanced geothermal systems. That is, we want to dr uh, drill into hot, dry rock where there's no water necessarily already there. And uh, we want to drill uh, deep where hot, dry rock is basically crystalline. It's either granite or basalt. These are very high, hard uh, rocks to drill into. Uh, so we've uh, we, we were going to exploit a high energy beam device that has been developed uh, uh, in the a nuclear fusion research area to uh, actually uh, melt and vaporize the rock rather than using conventional mechanical drilling technology. In this way, we get around the limits of temperature and pressure that are currently uh, preventing mechanical drills uh, going beyond much more than, say, six miles is roughly a you know, practical limit, I would say. Uh, and we are proposing that uh, we will be able to go beyond six miles, uh, uh, as far as 10 miles at least, is our goal, which is deeper than uh, possible uh, with current mechanical drilling technology. Okay, so this gyrotron, could okay. you explain how okay. that works a little okay. bit? So this is not a mechanical drill, uh, right. trying to go through the rock uh, and causing well, problems. Every knows knows what a laser is. So yeah. this is uh, similar to a laser, but at a wavelength much longer than infrared light. And uh, it's called a gyrotron because it converts the uh, energy in a high voltage electron beam as it traverses a high magnetic field. And the electrons in that beam gyrate around the field lines, and so it's called a gyrotron. I see. <laughs> and it's a, a very efficient uh, conversion device from electrical energy to millimeter wave energy. That's uh, energy at this wavelength uh, between one millimeter and 10 millimeters, roughly 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. Uh, you know, 5G, actually, 5G telephones operate up around 20, as high as 28 gigahertz, so we're at that range, and uh, modern automobiles have adaptive collision uh, uh, cruise control uh, systems which use 70, 80 gigahertz uh, beam uh, radar for that avoidance technology. So this uh, millimeter range is is right in that range, which is being exploited at lower power levels. Uh, uh, but fusion energy research, we develop tubes that can produce one megawatt beam energies. And those kind of energies are sufficient to melt and vaporize rock. Aha. Uh -huh. So is this safer than when you are vaporizing and you're going to go down there yeah. and you've got to bring the heat up safely? Yeah. Is that safer than if you are drilling and you're creating, you know, uh, disruptions in the rock? I don't, you know, fractures in the rock. No. Well, I, I you don't know. You know, <laughs> I I would say it's uh, not any more hazardous than mechanical drilling. That okay. we were directing a, a beam down into the hole, we would have to. Uh, uh, prevent leakage of that radiation, so there would be enclosures around the drilling hole. And then the uh, vapor that's brought up would have to be filtered to prevent small particle pollution in the air. So there are, it has its own uh, potential uh, issues, uh, but I wouldn't consider it uh, a, a real hazardous technology. Uh, okay, that's why I want to hear that, that because 
so much of deep drilling period. You know, it yeah. seems as though we yeah. here, we ordinary yeah. mortals, <laughs> can yeah. consider that there are a lot of risks in that. Uh, but the in you're saying it's really something that can be under control. Uh, oh yeah, just... it, it's definitely under control. Uh, I mean, it's an electrical beam. You have a switch yeah. you could turn okay. on or off. Yes. And. Uh, uh, the issues involved with it are all uh, manageable. Okay, now take us to the next thing. So then you get this heat to come up. It's reliable in the sense that the, I mean, the system is reliable. It's not going to fall apart or whatever. Then, the, so you bring this up, and then what happens? Because you're going to get both heat. And electricity, is that the idea? Well, uh, electricity. the goal of deep geothermal to the 750 degree Fahrenheit uh, temperature range is to get high temperature uh, uh, steam to come up and run an electric uh, generator. Okay. Okay, to get, to get that kind of heat. But you could mine the heat directly at lower temperatures and then distribute it as heat to uh, densely populated areas where you have many homes or where you have factories that need heat uh, at lower temperatures and you can use it directly. Uh, a lot of the electricity being generated is used to produce heat through electric uh, heaters. Yeah. Well, it, it would be more uh, efficient just to use directly to heat your home than exactly. uh, use electricity uh, that takes a certain amount of efficiency to generate and then you convert it back to heat. Uh, so geothermal could provide direct heating uh, as well as high temperature heat to generate electricity. Right, and your principal objective here is the electricity to turn the turbines and they're already connected to a grid, is that the yeah, idea? Yeah, that's our that's the princ principal motivation yeah. is to uh, mine heat that is hot enough to run current electric generators at the temperature for which they're already designed to operate at. Ah, okay, all right. So that would be a tremendous advantage and that would be a lot of territory, a lot of buildings that you could uh, 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 get to, right? Whole cities. And the well, electricity is uh, easily transmitted and it can be sent everywhere. That's what and for example, we're electrifying our vehicles now, yeah. uh, and then you could use the electricity in the transportation sh sector as right, well, right, as well as right, other right, areas where right. use electricity. Right. One other thing here is that uh, since this is underground, uh, is it something that is very reliable that you don't have to worry about storms and stuff, maybe earthquakes and volcanoes, but it, it, it has been a reliable source like you, when you have uh, uh, disruptions that are very serious, the flooding and all that sort of thing, this will still be okay? Oh, uh, uh, compared to other uh, sustainable energy sources like uh, solar or wind, uh, geothermal energy is uh, base power, uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. Uh, uh, since we're mining it from deep below uh, the Earth's surface, uh, I don't think it would be affected by the environment okay. on the surface okay. that much. Okay, even like flooding, massive flooding, like in Florida and so on. That well, I, I mean, if you have a well located near the water, uh, level uh, coastal area, but geothermals could be located on higher ground. Okay, where so that, flood, that flooding is not an issue. They'll do some engineering around that then to take yeah. that kind of thing into consideration. Dr. Walskoff, is this very expensive? Well, uh, we believe it could be much less expensive than current mechanical drilling uh, uh, technology. Uh, we need, uh, our main consumable is electricity to drill it. We need to uh, plug in our gyrotron into the ah. wall outlet, convert the electricity into the millimeter wave beam, and then we tra transmit it down into the hole. Uh, and then it has to be absorbed by the rock and the melted rock together. Now all of these efficiencies uh, we know, and uh, the electricity cost to drill a, a, a a deep well, uh, for example, uh, six miles deep 
would be on the order of about a half a million dollars. Now that sounds like it's a very high number, half a million, but a deep well to six miles uh, currently costs 25 to 30 million dollars, if not more. So the uh, main consumable with directed energy drilling is a very small fraction of the total cost of the well. Also, there are other inefficiencies that are potentially possible. Since we operate at a temperature that is at the vaporization point mm -hmm. of rock, over 3,000 uh, degrees centigrade, I should say, that that would be more like 6,000 Fahrenheit. Uh, the, uh, uh, the borehole is essentially melted with a glass wall, and we hope that we can self-case it as we drill, eliminating another major costs of the, uh, a wall. We also eliminate the need for any drilling muds because by drilling at high temperature in a confined volume, the hole is always over pressure. So there's no collapse issue with drilling a hole with a, a directed beam of energy. That, uh, yes, I want to get that clarified because that's very, really very interesting. Yeah. If I understood you correctly, in a sense, it creates its own, what do I say? Casing. Prefer, a casing. Yeah. I was thinking you'd have to then get something yeah. down there to make a casing, but you don't. We hope not to. Right. This is, we, we, we haven't really demonstrated this in the field yet, yeah, but the, right. the hypothesis is that we will be able to do that. We, we will be testing the strengths of the rock melts yes. and uh, testing this possibility, and, uh, and we hope the, the safe casing uh, part will also be verified. Right. This, uh, this gets more and more interesting. Yeah. Uh, the, if you can accomplish this, and so you don't have to have these deep, drilling uh, operations everywhere, but if you want to get like this large grid, you can exploit these old abandoned mines. Uh, well, not the mines, but the old, shafts, uh, the old fossil uh, burning uh, power plants that are being yeah. shut down because yeah. of the greenhouse gas yeah. issues could be revitalized there. by just putting uh, geothermal wells at that site, right. and if we can dr drill beyond six miles, we will be able to get the same quality heat to run that generator. Right. How much of the population in, say, any given country, or do you just see this as a worldwide potential at this point, if you can make this work? Because you could have what you're doing, the very deep stuff, and then more other stuff close to the surface. Do you think see this as a major resource in, this, in the future? Uh, this is a major potential game changer yeah. because it could be implemented at any fossil fuel plant around the world. Uh, so uh, it would be a major change yeah. if we're successful. Right. Uh, I think another thing pointed out in one of the articles that I read about it was that uh, uh, another thing in the repurposing is that the employees that were part of the uh, fossil fuel industry can then be retrained to work on this sort of thing. Is Do you see that? Oh, well, yes. I mean, if you're operating that same plant, but with geothermal energy, I would uh, believe that many of the employees associated with that plant would Right. They don't be... have to go get a PhD in geothermal. <laughs> Well, to, or to work with it. Not necessarily, but oh. someone there would have to have a PhD. Okay. <laughs> There's room for PhDs too, isn't there? Right, right, okay. right, right. All right. right. But, uh, but you have then a clean resource, an accessible, uh, which you're still te testing, um, a resource that can do a great deal. And then geothermal plants would be of different types. This is the sort, the sort that you're talking about is right. very deep, but yeah. there are others that are... Uh, closer Near the to the surface, yeah. as in Iceland, which apparently yeah. is very effective. Do you know anything about the Iceland situation? They've used it for a long time, I think. Yeah, the, uh, they have a hot spot there under Iceland where the uh, <laughs> magnets. I uh, like that hot spot, right? <laughs> relatively close to the surface. Yeah. And you know they're an active volcanic, <laughs> uh, volcanic area. Right. Uh, and so they've exploited uh, geothermal, the power there economy pretty much uh, almost totally, I would yeah. say. And, uh, uh, but they're still interested in advanced drilling technology. One of the things of uh, volcanic rock, uh, basaltic rock, it's very high 
uh, uh, strength igneous rock, crystalline rock, which is a, a difficult rock type for a mechanical drill to uh, uh, drill through. But I found in the laboratory that the harder the rock, the easier it is to melt. With the gyrotron? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the viscosity of uh, low silicate rocks, uh, like basalt, is very low. Once you melt it, it flows uh, very easily, uh, and it melts quickly. So uh, it's easier to drill basalt than a sedimentary rock like sandstone. That is interesting. And at the same time, it creates its own. Uh, and uh, hopefully, right. it will create its own case. Yes. That's uh, that. And basalt ga glass is a strong glass, so we know yes. that. Yes, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it really is a kind of glass, what you said, crystalline. Right, right. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. right. How very, oh, this is an exciting thing. Yeah. And then this distributed would be cheaper than, say, fossil fuel, ultimately, do you think? Well, I... I Unless they uh, kick up the prices. <laughs> uh, well, I, uh, I haven't done a cost analysis right. all the way sure, from sure. the... Uh, source to the uh, user right, right. in the home, but I, it, it, I think it, it would be very competitive. It will be a lot better for the environment, though. Uh, yes, there, no, that's uh, the thing. No yeah. greenhouse gases would be produced right. by this uh, energy source. Right. Um, some time ago, it seems to me that there was a, an argument against geothermal, which I think is not correct, and I'm going to ask you that it can cause earthquakes. Is that true? Uh, well, that if is, you're drilling. You're, there, there, it is true. Uh, several uh, geothermal uh, uh, drilling sites to tap in the heat have uh, uh, caused earthquakes oh, oh, oh. Uh, in South Korea most recently. Uh, there was an experiment in Switzerland. So it is, uh, it, it is a potential hazard, but uh, the main reason is that those uh, geothermal plants were built too close to fault lines. So you want to stay away from fault lines when you're drilling for heat. But the reason they drill near fault lines is because the heat is closer to the surface yeah, at a right, fault line. Right, right. I was so, going to say Iceland. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, however, if we're successful with our directed energy drilling technology and able to go economically to depths much farther than mechanical drills, we'll be able to site plants far away from fault lines. So, I believe with ah. the technology we're developing, there will be less of an issue with triggering earthquakes. Right. Um, you got started on this because you were using the gyrotron anyway, right, for uh, something else? Yeah, uh, well, the gyrotron uh, technology was developed in the magnetic confinement uh, fusion energy research going around the world to heat the plasma experiments to high enough temperature for fusion bur burn to occur. Uh, so these sources were invented back in the 1960s, and a lot of developments got into them. They're very efficient. They're much more efficient than charitrons. They have much more average power than uh, lasers. And uh, so it's a technology that we know and understand, and it's been engineered uh, to produce a, a large average power. You, do you use it in fusion now? Yes. As with your experiments? and. Yeah. Did it replace the laser? Did they start with using laser no, infusion um, and then switch? Or, or I'm well, confused. no, it, it was uh, developed specifically for magnetic confinement uh, fusion and research, where we have uh, resonances in the magnetic confined plasma okay. at these frequencies. Lasers operate in the infrared and visible range, and uh, they're not used for heating in magnetic confined fusion, but there are uh, inertial confinement fusion experiments that use lasers to produce fusion. And uh, those have been very successful recently as, as well at Lawrence Livermore Laboratory uh -huh. here okay. in the US, yes. for example. Okay, all right. So, and you've worked really more on fusion, right? This is the- Well, I spent most of my career working on fusion energy and in particular, 
diagnostics of fusion energy. Okay. Because uh, you need to make measurements remotely when something's 100 million degrees. Yeah, this is a little, <laughs> little high, yeah. But we're actually applying that experience to the drilling application. Because yeah. if we're drilling at uh, 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, we also need to make measurements remotely. And we're actually using some of the technology uh, that we've applied to fusion energy uh, measurements to monitor the borehole. For, uh -huh, for right, example, I I, in my laboratory experiments, I use a uh, thermal emission radiometer that I used on a tokamak plasma to measure the temperature in the borehole in real time. So I know that we've achieved uh, 2,500 degrees centigrade temperature because I can actually measure in real time in the borehole right now in the lab. Mm -hmm. Current mechanical drilling technology uses uh, sensors, uh, actually circuits that they put in the borehole, but they can't make a sensor compatible with the temperatures we want to mine. I was going to, to say mine. that heat, you, you wouldn't be yeah. able to do that, but you can use the But we can make measurements light. remotely. I see, I see. With fusion, since you've worked so much, if I may ask on that, what are the prospects there? That's terribly expensive by comparison. Well, uh, uh, fusion energy has seen a lot of recent progress. Uh, and uh, there, it is on the horizon. There is a lot of private investment going into uh, building uh, fusion burning uh, experiments and uh, energy plants. In fact, right here in, uh, uh, in New England, we have a company called Commonwealth Fusion that's been well uh, financed, and they hope to actually uh, build a burning experiment in the next 10, 15 years uh, over here at uh, the old Fort Devon site. I see, I see. But comparing these two sources, the fusion is, is it, I, I hate to say more complicated, but more expensive and more difficult, uh, presents some difficulties, whereas the geothermal, do you, do you think that one is better than the other or are you neutral? Well, the ultimate source would be fusion energy because of course fusion energy powers all the stars in the universe. Yeah, I understand. Okay, that so that would be the ultimate source. But fusion would be second, uh, I mean, geothermal would be second to fusion. Uh, energy. Uh, there is a lot of heat uh, beneath our feet here on the planet, and uh, you could get maybe many millions of uh, years of heat yes. that you can mine and just barely scratch the heat content of the planet. Uh, so I would say uh, geothermal would complement uh, fusion energy, and it could be brought it online maybe a bit quicker because there's less. Uh, of a challenge in, uh, in uh, mining high temperature heat than getting a reactor working uh, uh, on the surface. But eventually that's going to happen. That you're, that you're going to see both, you're, you mean? Oh yeah, you're we're going to see both, both. Come, on, uh, come online eventually. I'm, I, I think geothermal could potentially come on a little bit faster. Though. Yeah, well, it just the other aspect is it seems like it's very safe, maybe less expensive to get going, and it's as you said, it's twenty four seven. You don't you you know it's uh, accessible. Uh, yeah, yeah. So well, on, if we take advantage of abandoned uh, yeah. electric power plants, it certainly would be less costly because all the infrastructure is there at an abandoned fossil fuel plant. And all we need to do is uh, drill a few uh, geothermal boreholes uh, to mine that high temperature heat. Right. You mentioned that you were getting semi-retired, but you're doing it at the wrong time. You realize that, right? Well, <laughs> this is I, so exciting. <laughs> Just, well, I, you're right on the frontier here. Well, I've been uh, working uh, uh, at MIT over 45 years now, so you've seen I it was, all. <laughs> I, you know, I've uh, in the fusion program, and it's been a long haul, and we're finally seeing the potential of a payback on there. And and I saw this potential application to geothermal based on my background in the fusion yeah, energy yeah, program, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I see that as maybe an earlier exploitation of some of that. Right. And. Uh, 
Yeah, I've, I've seen quite a bit. You I know. think you're yeah. going to be showing up for work for a while here. Well, don't tell my wife that. She's against it. <laughs> we'll keep it quiet. <laughs> Dr. Walskell, thank you ever so much. This was most interesting to talk with you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you.